prayer, especially pray for me, Lord. Let us pray. O God, when creating the human race, will that man and wife should be one. Join, we pray, in the bond of inseparable love. These your servants, who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is arranged in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God and heaven. We can be seated as we listen to the word.
Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so also I love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be in you. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, congratulations, you two. Robert and Rachel, thanks for asking me to be here. My name is Father Jordan, and I am the director here at the University of Washington. You and Sam, and I met Rachel when she was a freshman, and Robert and I met Zoom in Chicago. So we met, we did that. You know, one of the things that um, excited me, not only your wedding, but you chose the book of Ruth, and I've been doing weddings for 27 years, and never once has anyone chosen that. Now that's a great thing because I am going to speak to you to this reading and obviously to speak to you. So if I go like this a lot, I'm trying not, I'm not trying to ignore you, but it's about them today, okay? And I think we all know that. So one of the questions that I think that comes to mind when I look at this reading is how does love grow and continue and strengthen over time? And so today, we're going to look at a story from Scripture that is almost 3,400 years old. Now, don't have time to read the whole story, but I want to talk to you about one scene. It's a scene you heard about, and it speaks, and it begins with the story of some people, poor people living in Jerusalem. There's a horrible famine in the land, and that family has to leave their home because of food. And they become refugees in a land, a foreign land, where the two sons you know eventually marry, and then there's, there's this tragedy, their father dies, and then they die, and three widows are left, homeless, poor, and with no protection. It gets better, okay? No protection. It does get better. You didn't pick it for that reason. It gets better. And here's the scene. Naomi, who's the mother in law, stands on a desert road and then tells her daughters to leave her that they should return to their families where at least they would have food and safety, where at least they could begin life, and so she's worried about them. She says, You really don't have a future with me. It's only it's going to be a plain life. It's going to be filled with danger. It's going to be filled with loss. So, daughters are all leave and accept one. And she refuses to leave. And Naomi pleads with her. And now she listens to what Ruth is going to say. She says, well, don't press me to go back. Wherever I go, you, I, wherever you go, I will join. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. And my, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. And that's how the story gets done. And it's a beautiful story. And it speaks to us, yes, about two women who wander out in the desert. But it's a story about God's love and his care for Ruth and Naomi. Today, Robert and Rachel, this is a story about God's love and his care for both of them. And I want to talk to you and all of us about three things that Ruth teaches us about love. And then I want to teach you about something that is surprising. 
The first thing that we hear is that love is going to risk through self-sacrifice. People often enter into a relationship with kind of this give and take. I'll earn the money, you clean the house, I'll shop, you cook, I'll, I'm going to be nice to you, and you're going to be kind to me. Naomi tells Ruth to clean the safety, to, be, to have a future, to hope, and to have comfort. Because she has nothing to offer. She said, you know, I have nothing but pain and poverty, bitterness and danger. The choice seems obvious, at least for me. But even if you look at it from terms of love, then it makes sense that that choice right there did not seem obvious. The truth, the love, love risks everything for the sake of the other person. And Robert and Rachel, you will have hundreds, if not thousands of opportunities, let me say it again, you will have hundreds of opportunities to take those opportunities to sacrifice your comfort choose for love, to choose for the safety and the pleasure of each other. And here's the beautiful thing. To learn to love each other like this, to risk in the sacrifice, to create a strong space, a safe space, not only for your family, but for everyone. Second thing it teaches us, love freely gives, gives a freedom. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, in our world, what we value the most is freedom. There's good freedom. But the freedom that our world speaks about is this ability that I'm going to do whatever I want. And so our culture elevates freedom above almost everything, even love itself. And then we look at Scripture, because we're Christian, we are followers of Jesus, Scripture talks about it differently, and Ruth, again, is not obligated to stay with Naomi. There's no law custom that says you have to stay. She could have left, as we heard. She did. Where you go, I will. She gave up her rights and her freedom. In order to love me. Raise my mother, have those opportunities, hundreds of thousands. But let me remind you that today you are giving yourselves freely to each other. No one is forcing you to make this decision. You decided to enter by yourselves. And here's the paradox of love. You choose to give up your freedom for each other. And if you do that, well then your love is going to grow the relationship. It's going to grow in intimacy. It's going to grow in trust. It's going to grow in honor. Because of how you give up this freedom that you might want the best thing for the other. Third thing. Love is a commitment. Ruth essentially makes this commitment, this covenant, with her mother in law. Just like someone else made a commitment with us. And she says, I promise to join my entire life with yours. I'm going to join it spiritually. I'm going to join it graphically. I'm going to uh, join you financially. I will never leave you. And she has the strongest possible safeguard. She says, if I don't keep this promise, may my punishment be death. Love is commitment. It's a promise never to leave. It's a promise to persevere. It's a promise not to give up. And it is a promise to continue, both of you, to try even when all, everything seems lost. And in a 
few moments, you're going to be saying some words to each other, beautiful words. You're going to make your wedding vows to each other, and you will state for all of us that you promise to stay together in good times and in bad until life grew. Jesus waits each of us to respond. Perhaps you're curious, I'm going to invite you to go home yourselves. Find out how the story ends. Because I'm not going to tell you. Because
tournament. I couldn't figure out what you had on the passers. They have no pass. Anyways, well, let's come on forward. Robert and Rachel, you have come together in the church, in the, into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord of the sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you, and through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in baptism, so that they may be faithful to each other forever. And assume the responsibilities of Mary. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you both to state your intentions. Robert and Rachel, have you come here to enter into marriage without her urgent freedom at the time? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of life to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall? I am. Are you prepared to accept children loving from God and bring them according to the law of Christ? I am. And so since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, I'm going to ask you to hold your right hand and declare your consent before God and his church.
sisters let us accompany the sweet family with our prayers. The mutual love of this couple may grow daily. The guide of God and his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For this bridal room and for the well-being of the family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to end marriage and for all of whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Rachel and Robert seal your union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit who live and reigns forever. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God for all their fun. We see in your kindness, O Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you, and in your fatherly love, watch over those who have joined in the sacramental cup in Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for Christ our Lord. For you have forged a covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design that while the birth of children brings Unity to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through with all the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end, beating the flame. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Most high and highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Most high
You are the holy Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending them to the Father of all so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and went to his passion, he took bread and gave thanks for it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he was presented into the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the Lord will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you for the life of the chalice of salvation. We give thanks to you, know this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Um, we pray for partaking of the body of the Christ, we may be gathered into one body of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and our Virgin. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the life of your grace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor to you. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bestow a heavenly blessing, O Lord, on Robert, your servant, 
that he may be a worthy and good and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that during desiring the approach of your desire to approach your table as a couple, join in the marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
power of the sacrament we have received may find growth in these your servants, and that the effects of the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by us all to Christ our Lord. That was kind of a weak amen. 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 Now, some announcements, it's just one of those things during this time, right? So, when you go back, one row at a time, unfortunately we can't gather the lobby. Okay, so you have to go outside and wait for the beautiful couple to come out after they sign the license. Each of the pauses, please give me an amen. Okay. May God the all-powerful Father grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to present to you for the very first time Dr. 